Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to be here today and have this um, opportunity to present our community. Um, we started to work two years ago, and by now we managed to collect uh, over 60,000 physicians in our network. Uh, we uh, cover uh, the territory, we actually focus on Russian-speaking physicians and we cover the um, whole territory of the former Soviet Union, which is now uh, lots of um, separate countries. Uh, but Russia, obviously, being the biggest one, um, accounts for the largest proportion of our uh, community members, followed by Ukraine, Belarus and Kazakhstan, and the rest covers the rest of the world, which is in total about 28 countries um, at the moment. We uh, also contradict the traditional uh, cliche about internet users with our users' uh, main age group being at uh, 45 plus um, age range. And um, our users spend quite a lot of time on um, our website. Uh, which I attribute to the model that we use, which is um, web to pure web to zero model and user generated content. Um, maybe you know that Russia was named uh, as uh, having the world's uh, most uh, uh, addicted to social media population. According to Comscore uh, um, survey, uh, Russia came as Russia, Russian users spend on average 6.6 .6, uh, hours on social websites, which is twice the number, uh, the average number for the rest of 38 countries that took part in their survey. So we uh, enjoy quite a lengthy average visit duration for our um, for our website, um, on average 20 minutes per visit, and um, our users usually. A look through 19 to 20, to 20 pages on average. Um, inside, we our content is password protected, so it's the closed community. We just um, let in only physicians, and there inside they have lots of different activities, um, such as obviously forum is the probably the biggest one at the moment. We split it into two sections. One is just general uh, discussions on um, professional medicine related topics. Uh, the other one, which is growing very fast, is uh, a section where physicians can post a difficult clinical case and ask colleagues to help. They can also attach um, little videos um, or photographs. Uh, and lately we've noticed that um, it's actually um, growing very fast now and um, at the moment we have um, achieved the level when a case is posted on um, our this dedicated section of our forum, uh, physicians get answers, five to ten um, answers within the first ten minutes, which is quite an impressive result. Well, depending on the particular um, uh, case, that varies, but on average that's the figures that we achieve by now. So, um, otherwise, they discuss uh, sort of very uh, traditional, probably, um, uh, things, and I don't know um, how um, others see it on their, uh, on their communities, but um, we had a very, uh, and still have very hot discussions about uh, the uh, alternative and traditional medicine. It's like believers and non-believers, the, the argument goes on and on, and it seems that there is no end to it. Um, there's lots of um, issues surrounding the uh, um, professional health care that um, physicians tend to discuss, as well as, as I said, specific cases um, and specific problems that they deal 
with uh, in their day to, in their day to day practice. We also create a couple of platforms to uh, help to collect the crowd uh, professional crowd wisdom. Uh, one of them is the wiki type of pages, where uh, it's the idea actually pretty much as um, in the wiki where everyone can post um, uh, some information on the topic and the other user can come and uh, uh, and actually um, edit it. We also do similar things for the um, uh, drugs. We collect the um, information about particular drug usage. We also stepped into e-learning and we uh, do uh, live surgery broadcasting and we do online uh, roundtables and lectures, which has been very popular because Russia is a vast country, we have nine, nine time zones and it's really difficult to arrange um, that kind of activities in offline to cover um, that, uh, that big territory. And, fi and, finally, so I'm finishing. and finally, we do activities for the pharmaceutical companies as well, all, all sorts of um, activities for them. Uh, as at the beginning of this year, we had the new law, which significantly restricts the activities between pharma companies and doctors. So we are truly believe that for us, for our healthcare, the way forward is in internet and in the social media. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks for that welcome, Denise. And by interesting, she means abject failure, but uh, I, I won't probably put it that bluntly. Uh, the slide you'll see up here is from a panel, or a discussion I gave in Washington a year and a half ago on how not to run a social networking site, uh, which I took an hour to do. I hear I'll, I'll spare you the hour and just a quickly over five minutes give you our experiences. And uh, I'm with the Canadian Medical Association, which is a national volunteer organization for Canadian physicians. We represent about 75% of practicing doctors in Canada. And four years ago, we decided to set up a social networking site for physicians because we felt that's what our members would want. And a lot of other people seem to be doing it successfully, Sermo for one and several others. So in August 2008, we launched Asclepius as a secure private social networking site for Canadian doctors, hosted on our own server using uh, open source software, and we were able to authenticate all of the doctors there, which is one of the important issues around social networking site for doctors, just to guarantee that the people are who they say they are. And our aim was to provide Canadian doctors with a platform to engage in whatever sort of online conversations they wanted to take part in, whether it be peer-to-peer -peer learning, discussing gossip, and or just wanting to set up dates with each other. We just wanted to make it available for any of our members, any other medical associations in Canada who wanted to use it to engage online as a, uh, as a community. Great idea, right? I mean, how, how can it fail? Um, it did fail, uh, sort of, and I will go through very briefly what I think we did wrong, which I think is, is some of the learnings you may take away from this. Interesting, the first thing was we had the wrong name. Although everybody knows, of course, that Asclepius is the Greek god of medicine, nobody can pronounce it. Nobody really knows the correct spelling. And we got a lot of abuse from our members saying, why would we be using a site where we don't even, can't even pronounce the name? We wanted to use uh, Doctor's Lounge, but that was taken, and we wanted to use some other much better names, but we, we went with Asclepius. We actually started the site with minimal technical support, very little funding, and very basic software, which we found into our, uh, to our learnings much later on, really couldn't support a lot of the things we wanted it to do. We had no value proposition, an important point. There was no good reason for doctors to go there and use it. We didn't develop special tools or special applications the doctors would really find of value. We had no online community manager to support it and no real physician champions. I mean, you would have thought all of this was obvious going into it, and we actually thought we'd thought of a lot of these issues, and this is speaking in hindsight. Interesting, the site was close to CMA employees. When we said doctors only, we meant doctors only, and since we have very few physicians on staff, it was very hard to get staff buy-in to support the site, which 
can create some challenges. And it wasn't linked to any of our own initiatives. We wanted to be agnostic and make this available to all who wanted to use it without tying it to the CMA, where, of course, we didn't play to our greatest strength, which is we're acknowledged as the foremost advocate for doctors in Canada, so why the heck didn't we play on that initially and use it to support our own initiatives? It was another, another lesson we learned over, the, over a couple of years. Uh, what did result in terms of numbers? Well, frankly, we had minimal, we've had minimal use of the site over the last four years. We've had 5,000 physicians register out of about seven, a base of about 70 to 80,000 who could have. And there's been little or no regular use. There are some weeks where actually nothing much happens on the site. And inter very interestingly, our one success has been when we as the CMA go out and ask our members for feedback, and the tool has worked remarkably well on that for engaging our own members, and that was the last thing we thought we'd want to use it for. Uh, last 30 seconds, what we're gonna do to correct all of this, I worked some, with some very good consultants over the winter, and we are going to change our model by, the consultants told us essentially we had the wrong platform and the wrong approach. So we are going to take a very fresh look at what we're doing. We're gonna strategically go forward with this to reposition it as a shared community that enhances the existing services and products that we have. By the way, doctors don't like social networking site, the, the phrase, they think it's a bit frivolous, so we're talking about shared community. So I have high hopes going forward, and I hope the little five minutes will play down the sort of the bad side, but really show you the learnings and where I think we can go with a good online physician community. So thank you. Thank you, Pat, and have a seat next to me here. Tao is my name. If you see the Chinese uh, in the conference, and this is the Gao, he uh, running a physician website in China for 12 years. Normally, I always say, we are a training company or we are a marketing company, but today in this environment, we say, okay, we are a, a physician community company. We started 99 and built a website that time. Over the last 12 years, we get more and more members. We are measure two things. One is, what is the percentage of our influence? And I tell you today, we probably 30%. 30% of professionals are influenced by us. And second, we measure is how deep we influence these physicians. And that is from 5% to 95%. Maybe you will see why it is. We have two kinds of applications on our website. When we call it, we have to save the time for the physicians. Most of these are things they want to do, and we want to let them do that more efficient. And there are a bunch of physicians, we don't know why they come to us, but we believe they want to kill their time with stay with our website. Therefore, we try to do something which is more fun, more interesting, help them to have a nice time. Uh, the application is half-half. One third of uh, 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 time they spent was on CME. One third on community, like forum, like uh, exchange. And one third on looking those news, looking for medical informations. We had a website, but the only thing in the past 10 years, we really helped the country, we really helped the nation to solve some problems was education. 12 years ago, we told, we promised, we whatever, we said we want all the Chinese physicians get the same quality of training as if 
they were in Beijing or in Shanghai. In China, it's a very broad spectrum. We have clinics, like in an African village. We have hospitals. It is probably as modern as in any US medical center. And we spent 10 years today to get the education quality of physicians almost at a standard level. Again, if we want to solve problems, E only helps us regardless 1.0 or 2.0 to reconsider the things again because we have more opportunities. And for us to solve a problem is using internet, using E as an element in the classic concept. And same we do with education. And today, we are doing the same, applying the same in marketing, because after 10 years, we feel that we now understand the education. We can do pretty good education. And we try to take a new area. And this is the marketing. We want to look at the things again and study the basic things and try to do something new. And that was. I thank you. Hello, and thank you so much for uh, the warm invitation. And it's an honor to be here. And I, my name is Rob Fraser. And uh, I think I have, no, I don't, RDJ Fraser on Twitter, if you're looking for me. And it's an honor to be here as a registered nurse and a colleague, but also as a patient uh, from motorcycle accidents and some other fun things. It's just uh, great to be here at this conference. And today I have the honor and uh, privilege to talk about the Connecting uh, Nurses Initiative, which is a global initiative, and it's a lot of fun to be part of. It is um, an initiative that is led by Sanofi, but in partnership with nursing organizations around the world. And its goal is really to bring together nurses online and in real life. And instead of kind of trying to duplicate and say, having a social network online, that's really neat. What we're trying to do is uh, do strategic kind of initiatives uh, underneath this Connecting Nurses um, uh, project and experiment in different ways that we can really help and support nursing and uh, sharing of ideas globally. So what I'm going to talk today about is one of those projects, the first that we launched and piloted and we just finished, which is Care Challenge. So just for my own interest, is anyone else here a nurse? Okay, now one other person, that's, that's good. Anyone else in the audience related to a nurse? Oh, there's three, four, five. And anyone else know a nurse? OK, so we all hopefully know nurses. But nurses do many different things. And can anyone, anyone have a, uh, a short explanation of what nurses do? Everything. What doctors don't want to do. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, we do a ton of different things. And it's not always easy for nurses to be able to talk about uh, what they do. We're very focused on. Uh, patient care and delivery, and we're recently coming more into the kind of research world and sharing knowledge and disseminating it. But we're involved in um, healthcare work all over the place. And this, getting to uh, the point of BART this morning, is why I'm interested in this. Ideas are extremely powerful, and when you share those ideas, incredible things can happen. And traditionally, the nursing profession has been a bit private, and we go about our kind of work and do our thing. When I was doing a site visit to a hospital uh, in Europe, there's a picture of very... Uh, uh, notable paintings, and the nurse was putting flowers into a vase, and then you had physicians that were, um, they had medals and plaques and awards, and there's museums all over the hospital dedicated to what they do, but the nurse's work was putting flowers in a vase, so often that work is hidden, and that's why this community really excites me. So the Care Challenge website was meant to recognize ideas globally, so instead of um, 
being a supporter and incubator that just kind of takes in applications and then tries to give out support privately, what we wanted to do was take in those uh, ideas and initiatives that are being led by nurses and push them back so the whole community could see what was going on. So nurses in Canada could see what was going on in Spain. So nurses in uh, Tongo could see what was happening in the Philippines. And they could decide what initiatives did they think were important. And they could vote on them. They could comment on them. They could get in touch with other people that were leading projects. And everything that was submitted was then publicly available for others to get in touch and collaborate with. And um, the initial first kind of round, we had two different types of support that we were trying to offer, which is a bit of seed funding, money to help get nurses off the ground. They had ideas about patient care that they wanted to do. They had ideas about research that they wanted to try, but they might not have had the resources in their organization because now funding can be very tight. You might need a multi-site trial. You need a lot of government support. So we wanted to see how could we just get them off the ground and get them started. And the other part was recognition. So if a nurse had done an incredible project, how could we then recognize it and get that spread? So uh, recognizing nurses and putting them in the limelight. So we're offering them professional video production to help spread their idea across their country and globally, which is very exciting. And it just finished on Monday, we announced the 20 winners and we're very, very excited because we did have projects from around the world. The top submissions, or the most projects were submitted from Canada. Then we also had um, Morocco in the top three. We had over 120 projects. Uh, we had votes from nurses supporting initiatives and uh, a lot of them got up into 5,000 people submitting to um, support an initiative and recognize it as an idea for excellence. And to give you an example of some of the things that are happening, there's a telehealth project in the Philippines that we're trying to recognize that's doing elderly support to their communities. There's wound care and ostomy care management that's happening in Tongo and trying to get that out to community healthcare workers. In Ireland, there's people working on epilepsy projects and making sure that we're actually doing holistic care, not just getting access to treatment, but education for uh, patients. And then another great example that we just found out about was, uh, and was a winner, but they're doing virtual uh, uh, support from nurses for HIV patients. But not only did they get some support for their project, but now they've partnered with international organizations to make it a multi-sided kind of project that they're going to start to explore collaboration. So that's the why I think it's important, and hopefully you guys are a little bit interested in during questions we can talk a bit more. Thank you. Thank you so much. So something along the lines like that happened, and Tian Tian Li is not here with us today. However, he is going to be here by virtue of the magic of video. Miles, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Stanley uh, Tian Tian. I'm in China now. I'm very sorry I cannot go to Paris to meet you. So I have to prepare this video for my presentation. And my presentation is something about the XY. So it is great honor for me to introduce the XY to you. Uh, now I'm going to introduce some basic profile of the XY. The XY was started in the year of 2000, 12 years ago, it's pretty long time. Uh, right now we have over 3 million users and most of our users are our clinical physicians. And 64% physicians are located in tier 3 hospitals. In China, we have tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 hospital. Tier 3 hospital is the best hospital. It's public hospital. And also, most of tier 3 hospitals are located in the capital city in China. And here, I, I, I want to show you two um, groups of data to tell you the different levels of our members. You, we, we know that, uh, doctor, we have the residents, attending doctor, uh, associate senior doctor, and a senior doctor. So uh, in the first row, this is the distribution of the XY. We have 3% senior doctor, 8% associate senior doctor, 21% attending doctor, and 68 uh, residents. The next row shows the natural distribution in China. We collect this data from the uh, statistics report on MOH uh, website. So in China, usually we have 2% senior doctor, 10% associate senior doctor, 28% attending doctor, and 60% residents. So if we compare these two groups of data, we found that it is very similar, but there is one thing different that DXY has more younger doctors than the 
natural distribution. But if you see the senior doctor, we have 1% higher than the natural distribution, which means many senior doctors are also very active in GXY. And right now we have 120 employees in China and four offices. The head headquarters of DXY is in Hangzhou. And in this slide, I'm going to introduce our services. The first picture is the portal, is the homepage of DXY. We help pharmaceutical companies to launch some events on DXY. I can introduce more uh, in the interview later. And also we have the banner advertisement. So the pharmaceutical companies, life science companies, they can post their uh, promotions on DXY on the front page. And here is the forum of DXY. Actually, DXY start from a forum, and right now we have over 100 different specialties and subspecialties. But the most popular part in DXY is clinical medicine. We also have the life science part and pharmaceutical research part. Um, so uh, in, in DXY, the members will actively exchange ideas, communicate with each other, discuss with each other, post their opinions, their comments, so the uh, uh, forum is very active. But the forum is not only enough because the forum is topic-centered, um, but the, we have to adopt some features from other social media. So we adopt several features from, YouTube, uh, from Twitter and Facebook, like you, in DXY you can follow somebody, you can follow some topic. Because a uh, forum is topic-centered, but uh, the social media should be people-centered. So we combine these two things together. So in forum, it's topic-centered, but in the back end, it's still a people-centered. If you follow somebody, follow some topic, if the people you follow the post some new comments or new post, it will generate a new news feed, and the news feed will automatically be displayed in your uh, back end. So if you log on the XY, go to your own uh, 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 back end, you can check out these updated fees. It's very convenient for the physicians because physician is always busy. And this picture is Biomart. Biomart is focused on the e-commerce platform uh, because in China, many physicians, they need to do uh, scientific research. They have to buy reagents, antibodies, cell lines, experimental animals, everything. But they have very li little time to figure out the price or quality. So we set up this website to help physicians to pick up the, um, uh, some merchants or compare the qualities. Of course, this uh, platform is, uh, is not free. Um, we charge the membership fee from the company. We charge uh, the listing fee from the life science companies. After being a member of Belmart, the company can upload their products online. So through this website, uh, we help physicians to do the scientific research, and we also help life science companies to promote their products online. And the job MD is over another product. Um, we build up this website to help pharmaceutical companies, to help private hospitals to recruit talented people. Since the XY has been running for 12 years, we have set up a huge talent pool. So we use this platform um, to help physicians to find a job and also we help the industry, the companies to find the people and we also charge the membership fee to the uh, from the companies. Both the two products, Belmart and JobMD are all free for physicians because they are our users and we care about their experiences. We don't charge membership fee from our users. And this product is a very new developed is focused on the mobile applications. We develop a mobile application. The name is Drug Assistant. We collect the description manual of uh, prescribed drugs and we make it uh, in the, into iPhone, iPad, and Android. And uh, this application is also free and uh, physicians can download this app from App Store or Android Market. Um, it's quite, we are quite optimistic about this uh, application because in China, mobile application is growing very fast recently. Uh, since last eight months, uh, 
this application totally has been downloaded over 2 million times. Of course, not all of the downloading is physician. We, um, we noticed that there are several lay people, the ordinary people also download this application. And we figure out maybe they just want to find out some drug information because uh, not uh, because this application in China is very welcome and very authoritative. It has been hold the top position in the medical category in Chinese uh, uh, market. So we are quite optimistic about these applications. And uh, that's all. That's the basic introduction of DXY. And if you have more questions, I would like to answer your questions later. And thank you very much for your attention. May you have a very good day in Paris. 谢谢大家，祝大家在巴黎玩的愉快。谢谢。We're ready for the question period, and believe it or not, I have his number on my cell phone, and we didn't have time to test whether it would work. But I believe that if I put the cell phone on speakerphone, you can hear his answer. So. I would, would like to try asking him one question. He's waiting over there. It's six hours later. Does anybody have one burning question for Tian Tian about his organization in China? Or else I'll ask the question. You know, there's, um, is it uh, who wants to be a millionaire where you call somebody at home and ask them a question? We'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll stop right away. Hello? Hello, Tian Tian. You wanted, wanted to just hello? Say, say hello. Speak really loud. Hi, uh, Denise? Yes, we're, we're Denise and a few friends are listening to you. Okay. So, so we've just seen okay. we've just seen your video, and I'd like to know um, what are your plans? Is there any one major thing that you're planning to change about the offer to the physicians? What's the next big thing that Chinese physicians want? Uh, I'm sorry, Denise. Uh, I, I need to uh, understand your question clearly. Okay. Clearly. Yeah. My question is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. If you don't like that question, pick another one. <laughs> to understand your question first, and then I can try to answer. Okay. What are you doing next with your website? What's going to be new? I think um, the content is very important, uh, especially if you want to attract more physicians to visit your website. And right now we are, uh, I think the next thing we are going to do is we are trying to provide more uh, high quality content to the Chinese physicians. And also uh, we want to, uh, the next change, big change I think could be uh, mobile applications. Because uh, in China, um, the mobile application market is, is growing very fast. So we want to catch up with this trend and develop more useful tools uh, on the mobile, uh, on the smartphones, and provide it to the uh, Chinese physicians. I think content uh, king, and the mobile application is the queen. Uh, content plus tools will generate a great, uh, useful um, uh, platform for Chinese physicians. Okay, thank you. I think you've made a tweet there with content is king and mobile is queen. I'm sure that that from Stanley, Tian Tian likes to be called Stanley. Stanley Lee has made an impact around the world with this tweet that I'm sure a number of you will do. I'm going to hang up because otherwise it looks weird. And uh, I'm going to go on to further questions here. Thank you, Stanley. You can go to bed now. You're welcome. Okay, so, so who has questions? Oh.